servants of God in the ministry. Guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where God called them into the ministry, the challenges and oppositions they face. Ministry is not for lazy people. I wanted to be a medical doctor. And I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. I'm but in all of it, we're more than conquerors. I felt, um, I felt this, this if I if I quit, it, I didn't know how I was really going to survive. And how far the Lord, by His grace, has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know, being in that ministry. The mistakes are made, and then how you choose your leadership. You really, really take your time in prayer and be very convinced. Praying for them to be healed and God worked miracles. Mm. The enemy is smart. And I always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable. Mm. It takes the power of God. My Story, His Call is broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and the Word and Spirit Network Radio with your host, God's servant, Eric Obey. Follow and subscribe for life-changing encounters. This is time that we want to be encouraged. This is time that we want to have fellowship in the law. My story is called One Call, Many Great Stories. Hello, 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 hello. Another day, another time, the beginning of the year 2024. A day that you and I have been waiting for. A day that we cannot wait, but meet again and engage ourselves with the fathers. And uh, with me in the virtual studios is another servant of God. A man who has seen it, who has done it, and still in the business of laboring, so far as the work of God is concerned. And with me in the virtual studios is Reverend William Obin Dako, a seasoned man of God. You know what time is it? It is my story. It's called Time. So please take your device, uh, take your notebook, uh, and please share, as always, and as you know, Anytime we get these fathers in the house, we don't let them go. We try as much as possible to get the best out of them. So get your questions ready, get things ready, and let's do it together. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't know about you. So we are live on Facebook, as you can see. We are live on YouTube, and we are live on the radio. So on the radio, you can catch us live on Word and Spirit network with God servant Eric Obain. If you go to uh, Garden, Garden uh, Modern Ghana, you can catch us live. If you go to Zeno platform, we are live and we are connected to other sister radio stations. What can you do to help us? Take your device, share, 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 and share to as millions of people as you can as we do this together. Wow. So let me go ahead and engage Reverend William of being and i believe that your life will never be the same daddy you are welcome thank you wow in fact the management team of my story has called want to say a big thank you so 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 much <laughs> for <laughs> we want to say thank you for availing yourself to be a blessing to us today. In fact, we don't take that lightly at all. If I were about to start, I could. I was getting calls asking, when are we going to start? I believe that people are eager. And why? Because we want to learn from a father. So please, we want to know you. Our first question is to know who our guest is. So please tell us about yourself. Who is Reverend William Obinda? Where did life begin? Where were you born? Walk us through that. We are ready. God servant, Eric. Yes. I uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. Mm. You know that we have sought to do this a year or so earlier. <laughs> but uh, God's time is always the best, you know. That's right. So That's right. I want to thank you. 
And before I uh, answer your question, I want to quote First Timothy chapter one verse twelve. It was later I recognized that it was even on your flyer. Paul writing wow. to Timothy said, "And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, mm. who has enabled me, for that He counted me faithful." putting me into the ministry. Wow. First Timothy 1 12. And uh, sincerely, I want to thank God because this, this scripture verse has been ringing in my heart for about three days now as I was thinking of coming in here. Mm. And I need to give God thanks because if the Lord Jesus didn't put me into the ministry, mm. perhaps you and I will not be sitting here. That's right. So I didn't want to finish before I thank him. I want to thank him before commencing to say anything. Because this is this is about him. Mm. This is not about me. And it is what he has done and he continues to do. That becomes a blessing. So I thank you and I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. He enabled me and he put me into the ministry. As you know, my middle name, my middle name is William, but it became my first name. Uh, my first name is Joseph. So my full official name is Joseph William Obindak. But when I was in school, I, uh, I was thinking that Joseph, as we know in the Bible, suffered a lot. And I didn't want to suffer like him. So, though officially it's in my, all my official records, but, but I use my name William, the middle name, because I really love the name William. And so okay. that is how people came to know me. And some call me Pastor William and so forth and so on. But uh, at times when you say Joseph, people don't know whether it's me, but he's the same person. So, okay. um, you could use any, but please just stick with William and uh, we both of us will be blessed. Um, okay. <laughs> um, uh, I would like to say that I am an Equiapim by birth. My daddy comes from Equiapim, Ekropong Equiapim. My mommy is an Achim from Chebi. And uh, I do have uh, about um, 10 siblings. I included, we are 11. Mm. And uh, we, uh, I included, we are 11. And I think, um, Both my daddy and mommy are diseased as at this time. Okay. I um, um, I was I was I schooled in a cropon, a crapim, trained okay. trained with the Presbyterian kind of training, you know, and the crapim kind of training. Uh, I live with my grandma, and I came to live with my daddy in Accra, continue my education in Accra. Okay. I was in Wesley Grammar High School, okay. uh, Dansoma. And uh, just as I was about to go to sixth form in Accra Academy, uh, 1979, my daddy passed away. Hmm. We had plans uh, to go overseas to Oral Roberts University, but all those plans did not work. So mm. I went to work. I worked with, uh, at that time, what was called Accra City Council, who today now is okay. called AMA, A-M-A. And uh, I worked <laughs> with their, <laughs> I worked with their auditing department because I studied accounting and auditing. Okay. So I worked with them. And then later I left and worked with a private uh, accounting and auditing firm where we audit. So I work 
worked with them. And then later I left and worked with a private uh, accounting and auditing firm where we audited. So I worked with them. And then later I left and worked with a private. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you now. Can I go ahead now? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. So I worked with the private accounting firm in Accra where we we kept the accounting books of uh, many organization companies and audited their books. And um, I stayed there for quite a time, but then I had become a Christian. I was, I was preaching here and there. Invitations will come, come do a, a revival service for us. Three days you go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so Friday, you miss work. And it wasn't very convenient to be going and missing work. You got to show yourself as a good worker. So gradually, I noticed that I couldn't combine the circular work and then the opportunities that God was opening up to me as far as ministry work is concerned. Okay. And uh, at that time, we were like uh, myself and many of my colleagues, we were like hot cakes everywhere. If you live here, somebody wants you here, if you want this. So then I had to get into the ministry, I mean, full-time ministry um, from that onwards. So in a gist, these are some few things I could say about my early beginnings. That's right. Well, if you just join us, this is My Story, His Call. And with me in the virtual studios is one of the fathers who had labored, who has seen it all. And the good thing is that he's still in the ministry. Now, Reverend, let's go back and dot the I's and cross the T's from your foundation. Uh, looking at the fact that, I mean, you had the ambition, you know, to pursue your academics, but that didn't materialize. Now, how was life growing up, you know, as a child? Do you recall any kind of difficulties? Because all that we see is Reverend Obin today. But we don't know probably what has been, you know, things behind the scenes that we don't know. Can you walk us through any challenges growing up? How was life? Um, I would just like to talk about two sides of it. Um, one, I had a very good family. I have a wonderful father. I used to think that nobody had a better father than I did. Wow. My father was a good man. And he and he did take care of all of us. Hmm. At a certain time, Eric, if I'll be honest with you, hmm. I thought that my father was like God to me. Hmm. Wow. Yes. My father was my father was everything it doesn't matter what even if i was mm. sick and i saw my father i'll be well i didn't live with my mother but uh, i stayed with my grandmother and came to live with my father and um he provided for all our needs i never know i never uh, knew if there was anything like lack mm. or want or that kind of thing mm. even as we grew up, people even began to think that we were like, we call back home Dada Bas, you know, special okay. privileged ones and so forth. Okay. But okay. when I got born again, mm. and I began to take the things of God serious, there were mm. changes in my, in my life, uh, which wasn't arguing well for being part of the family. Mm. Like uh, we would go to the stadium every Sunday. You know, we're Presbyterians. We go to church. We don't keep long. You know, the Pentecostals and the Charismatics do keep long in church. You know? <laughs> but but the Presbyterians, we don't keep long in church, you know. So we're close and we know mm. that by 11, 11, 30, we should be at the stadium. My mm. dad, my brothers, five brothers, we all like soccer. Mm. So we'll go to the stadium and... Uh, come back home, that kind of thing. But the moment I became born again, mm. and uh, gradually I joined Pentecostal church, you no, know, I mean, 
time that we have to go to stadium, that's the time our worship service starts. You know, right. we are doing Sunday school and all that. Mm. So gradually, I was like missing in action. Mm. And uh, my daddy, my daddy didn't really like that. My daddy used to wonder. One mm. day my daddy asked me, he said, what is wrong with you? Do I stop okay. you from worshiping God? I said, no. Mm. He said, mm. don't I myself worship God? I said, you do. He said, so okay. how come as a young boy, 13, 14 years, everything is about church, 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 church. Is there anything in particular that you need that I'm not providing? Mm. I said, no, dad. He was a bit surprised. So I guess he tried to put some mechanism to mm. see whether I would be discouraged from going to church. And I don't say mm. this to dishonor my daddy's memory, but I, but I look back and I see he was trying to test my resolve and uh, that kind of thing. So then Sundays when I have to go to church, they are going to praise me. Yeah. I'm going to, I live in a place called Kotubabi and I have to go to Mataheko. You know, there's, okay. it's a, quite a distance. And I go to right. say that I'm going, so, okay, go. And I'm young, but I don't have mm. the money to go, you know. Okay. So there were times, and I speak the truth, there were times I walked from Kutubabi to Mataiko to go to church. Wow. Yes. Such mm. was the fire of God burning. Jeez. I love the church. I love the worship. I love everything. So I would mm. go there and uh, today I look back, uh, if you know uh, the lady called Dr. Chris, uh, Dotete Christie. Yeah, yeah, yeah Christie Chris, Dotete, yes. Yeah, Dr. Christie Dotete and I were in the same church and we live in the, wow. same, we live in the same area. So she was more mm. like a big sister because she was working okay. at, as a secretary in Rivera Beach Hotel. Okay. And today I want to use this opportunity to thank her a lot because she will wow. give me money and then she will mm. make sure uh, if she picked the taxi I am in and will come home and then wow. she'll put me home and she will go and she will always check on me and so forth and so on. Mm. Today both of us are serving in the Lord's ministry. And I give God wow. praise. So wow. these were a real serious time. I didn't have much difficulties like some people did. But, you know, as okay. a young boy, and I've already said my daddy was like God to me. So to have this kind of, <laughs> I don't, it's not confrontation, but like your daddy says, no, you have to come to church. And, and, and you think that this is the church you have to go was a big issue okay. for me. You know, wow. but aside, yeah, aside that, serving God, going to camps and things like that were just the normal. And mm. Um, mm. yeah, the rest I will tell as the interview comes on. <laughs> wow, beautiful, like, beautiful, this, beautiful. This beautiful. Yeah. Wow. If you just join us again, this is my story, his call. And uh, we highly encourage that you share. Please share, share, share. This is our first broadcast for 2024. So we want to flood the whole atmosphere with this broadcast because we have a father in the house. I can see a lot of people watching with us. Richmond Dapa is watching all the way uh, from Ghana. He says that, amen. And I see this from ICGC, uh, the Masonic Temple. Reverend Dr. Obin Daku is a great gift of God to the body of Christ. Kindly share, okay? And uh, keep sending your comments. Bible said that wherever the shepherd is, the sheep must be around him. So this is the time that daddy wants you to, I uh, mean, to show, I uh, uh, mean, up and uh, know that, yeah, you are still with him and he's, and he's also with you. We see this coming from Equia Dako, uh, that's Amang Kona. It says that Reverend William will love you. This is coming from Yahweh. Yahweh is watching us from Ghana. Please send in your comments. Uh, let us read it. We read it loud for daddy to today is a conversational time today is daddy and son's relationship that we don't have any formula to this interview 
we are just having fun. Let us know where you are watching us from. Wow, this is Doris. Doris Edu Buama says that watching from UK. Wow, so the UK people are here. Please share, share, share. The last time that I checked, we haven't shared enough. We want to get into the hundreds today. So please share and share and share. Now, let me come back to you, Daddy. We are building up our story gradually. Now, we've understood from the foundation of your life how Daddy was there for you throughout. Now, at this point, at what point in your life did you get born again? And I, I mean, what 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 really happened? But I realized that you are about to take us into your ministry life. But we want to take it gradually as we get there. Walk us through that aspect of your life. What happened? How did you get born again? It's a very difficult question because at times you couldn't just tell mm. it was on this day or that mm. day. Mm. But then with me, I can mm. remember the year 1974 wow. is when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they got filled with the Holy Ghost in 1976. Okay. Um, see, being a being a Presbyterian, we 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 take our worship of God very serious. Okay. But I don't know about me, but it seems like right from my childhood, I had a drawing mm. towards the things of God. Mm. Uh Pastor Eric, you will know that uh, some people's calling are very mm. spectacular. Okay. Like uh, Moses. Moses mm. and the burning bush. Okay. You know, like uh, Samuel and he had a voice and he wasn't small. I I didn't I didn't have any spectacular call. Mm. I never even had a dream God calling me. <laughs> I never I never had anything like that. The only thing I had was a strong burning desire in me that drew me to God and the things of God. Okay. I used to wonder where people will spend eternity. Jesus. As a young boy, I used to wonder where will people spend eternity when they die? Mm. Mm. Because I live with my grandma, and when people died, they brought them back home at uh, mm. our family house at Ekropong. They prepared mm. their bodies, and then they put them in state. As mm. a young, small boy, I used to be there when they are preparing the corpse and all that before they put them in the, uh, in the coffin or on the bed to lay them in state. That's right. And these are people who have who have hugged me, who have embraced me, who have advised me. My grand aunties, my aunties, my uncles, my grand uncles. Mm. Mm. And then when I say young boy, I sat there, right there, whilst they prepared them, they put on their suits and all these things. My mind will be going through. My Jesus. mind, I will be thinking. Mm. Is that especially when they lift them up and they'll be talking to them? Mm. as if they can hear and they are dressing them and then they put them Eric and then they put them in on the bed and this thing had a very serious impact mm. on me that I always used to ask myself is there life after this life mm. you mm. know I didn't have the answers but mm. I think that that also propelled me Mm. In addition to that inner drawing to serve. I did I never missed Sunday school when I was in in uh, the Presbyterian church as a young boy. One okay. day my father one day my father felt that oh we should all be home and chill and have fun. I said, No, I'm going to church. My daddy mm. asked me, So are you telling me that the pastor never misses church one Sunday? Why okay. can't you? Why can't you? <laughs> why can't you accept to miss church one wow. Sunday? Wow! Is the church built on you? I mean, can you imagine? I was like, I was like, uh, uh, eleven years then. Mm. Yeah, I'll never forget that. He couldn't understand why every Sunday I want to be in church. That's right. So one day he said, he said, son. You, are you telling me that the pastor doesn't miss church one day? That's right. <laughs> you know, 
no. So, so the pool was mm. there. I mm. can't even tell whether those days I accepted Christ. I can't tell. Me, I, okay. I, don't, I don't know because there wasn't a specific time I said I raised my hand and I want to receive Christ. But mm. this was there at times when I lied down, I'll be assuming I'm talking to God and I'm mm. asking him to take my life and, and I want to save you and all that. Then I went to secondary school. Okay. Wesley Grammar. Okay. To my to my amazement, mm -hmm. when I went to secondary school, form one, new people who have come, okay. they picked me up as an executive member of the scripture union. Wow, just like that. that. Normally you get form three, form four. Form That's right, three. yeah. But but mm. right there they, they took me on. Mm. And um I can't tell whether at that time I re is when I prayed the sinner's prayer or so. <laughs> you know, at times people think, when did you pray the sinner's prayer? I can't tell why. Wow. But, but I can tell you that 1974 was a great time in my Jesus. life. And uh, I began. So I served in the scripture union mm. right from form one to six form. And mm. uh, I also was made by form four, I was made the president of the scripture union. Okay. And okay. I've been I've been so up to today. Wow. So it's 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 just like God drawing you to to himself. Wow. I didn't have I didn't have any spectacular experience, Eric. That's I didn't right. have any you know, but with me, what goes on in my heart? Mm. What the Holy Spirit puts in my heart. Jesus. It's what has brought me through up to this point that I'm talking to you, God's Amen. Amen. Wow. I don't, I, don't, I don't look for any sign. I've, I don't look for any signs outside. Mm. Mm. I can tell you how many times in my life that I have had one or two signs. Mm. But as I grew up, I began to understand that the Holy Spirit of God was in me. Amen. Wow. Then, then I understood the drawings that was in me. Oh, Jesus. So I, I, I never I never really look for signs and so forth and so on. And mm. that is how life has been. Another thing that really influenced my upbringing in the Lord and, and so forth was... Um, this same drawing, this same passion made me always look for Christian books, pray this. And then one day I was told that uh, an evangelist called Benson Idahosa of Blessed Memory, the Adbishop, okay. Okay. was going to have, I think in 70, I don't know whether 77, 76 or something, one of them was going to have a, a crusade at uh, Ghana, his first time in crusade. I didn't go to that crusade, but then okay. I was receiving, I was receiving his magazines. Okay. So I wish I would go, but I couldn't go. So when he came, I read about the miracles that happened. Mm -hmm. And at times I'll be, I'll be reading and I'll cry and I wish that the Lord will use me mm. in those things. So I wrote to him. I wrote to him. Okay. And when I wrote to him, he said to me that uh, he has a, a compatriot in Ghana. Okay. And uh, he has written to him to take care of me. Wow. God's servant, Eric, this is one of the greatest things and landmark oh, Jesus. that I can wow. tell you. Because I just want to share with you and our audience how God can help us and lead us. Because most of the time we have made these things about men, but it's not about men, it's about God mm. and, his, and his plan for you. And he will not follow anybody's plan. He has his plan oh, and he will, he will draw oh, you. That is why oh, in the scriptures, you don't find any one person or two people, let me put it, whose calling and training are the same. Okay, okay. No, look, look okay. at Joseph's call. Okay, okay. Look at Moses' call. Mm. 
Look at Eli, 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 Elisha's call. Okay. Okay. You, you look at the way Peter and them were called. Show me anybody from Genesis to Revelation whose calling were like the disciples. Mm. When did God meet them? At which at which riverside or seaside catching fish? That's right. So mm. so it's so different. It's mm. so different. But but what is important is for us to be very genuine, sincere, and see that this is God. You know so. So he wrote to he wrote to me and he wrote to the pastor. The pastor was a Nigerian, a very respectful. Okay. Uh, he was a bank official who okay. who got converted and became a pastor. His name is B.C. Oribayo. He's okay. the finest pastor I've ever met in my life. Okay, he's the finest. He was like a, he was like a, a natural father to me. Mm. And uh, at that time, I guess I was in form four or form three to form four uh, in the high school so i went to him and i was they were in matahiko so i would just go from dansuma to matahiko to church mm. and uh whilst i was in school and much of my christian foundation i had from the four square gospel church wow they are evangelical and pentecostal alike okay the founder, Amy Simple McPherson, mm. was one of the leading, leading, leading Pentecostal pioneers. And so I learned a lot. And uh, I was put in leadership places, apart from being SU president, since from, from four up to six form, uh, I became a youth leader, prayer secretary, men's executive, and my pastor really supervised me. Wow. So that was where I was. And even though I had friends who were also in the scripture union in other right. schools, like uh, uh, Dr. Ni Bishop Ninabi Takiyabwe, one, oh, of, okay. one of my greatest friends on the face oh, of wow. God. Wow. Beautiful. Yes. And Beautiful. then Pastor Edwin Otabel. Oh, okay. Yeah, Apostle, yes. It was through him that I met his brother, uh, Dr. Mensah Otterbell. Okay. And then I am Dr. Mensah Otterbell became greater friends than even Edwin. <laughs> you know, oh, so wow. Yeah. <laughs> because, because God had a purpose and a plan, you know. So um, in talking about this, this were my childhood uh spiritual connections that God gave to me and uh, I learned the gift of the spirit I learned being strong in the word of God in first Square gospel church okay and now Reverend let yes. me let me let me ask this question because we only yes. get clarification here yes. uh you are a father you've seen it all when we love fathers like this when they come on our platform we want to get the best out of them in your case you said that somebody was appointed to in a way mentor you you had a figure in a way yeah that in you yeah. now look at the ministers of today and what we see in the system some of us are hungry we are looking for fathers to lead us to direct our path at times we get at the junction where we don't know where to turn either the left or the right Mm -hmm. but the call is there the gifting is there and we don't know what to do you being a father what would you advise what is the way out do we have to go around looking for the fathers and say that uh reverend obeying uh, I, I i feel i want to come and and serve you i want you to nurture me i mean i mean tell us tell us what should we do my candid view is that god leads people differently mm. see we cannot take one rule and okay. make it for everybody okay in my case a man i've never i've never met archbishop benson in the hosa i've never mm. i've never set sight of him even okay. later on when god was using me he came to do crusades in ghana again and many of my colleagues were there i i wasn't there i never met him but god okay. used him 
to make a recommendation for mm. me. Okay. So, am I going to say that everybody needs recommendation? No. Okay. There are different, different. One, when somebody gets born again under your ministry, mm. you have a responsibility of bringing the person up in the Lord. Okay. And you will observe mm. and you will help the person and see the call of God upon the set person and, and help the person. So that is also another aspect of it. Okay. And then we have another aspect where there are people who are not under anybody. Mm. Even if they are recommended to go serve somebody, they wouldn't want to do that. Okay. So they move. We have seen that. They move mm. from place to place and they are doing their own thing. Okay. And then, and then they come to you and Pastor Rick, please hear my heart. They come to you and say, they want to be, they want you to be their spiritual father. It's a blessing, but at times okay. it's very dangerous. Okay. Why is it dangerous? Mm. Because they chose you and they cannot choose you anytime. Mm. And most of the time mm. it does happen. There is no fear and there is no desire to be humble under you. Because being a spiritual father is not just, oh, take this, go and read this, let me lay hands upon you. I'll give you one example. Okay. Pastor B.C. Oribayo, he was like a father figure to me. Mm. Something happened. Now I was, <laughs> mm. I was, I was, I was with the youth. I was, I was a youth president in the church at that time. I finished high school, but because I had friends, okay. like like uh, Pastor Takia Boy at that time, I had friends like uh, Pastor Acel at that time, Michael Acel at that time. Reverend Eric Wapong at that time. Okay. Um, uh, I think that time I haven't met Dr. Otabel yet, but okay. there were many others. Mm. And, uh, and, so, and so we will organize Christian retreats outside our churches. Okay. Because, because we had scripture, you know, we knew people, the fellowships mm. were there. So we, we, we had become like... Uh, uh, commandos, if you like. <laughs> we, 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 serve, we, we serve in the special uh, in our local churches, the regular army, and then we serve in the commandos, you know, like you hear this, oh, there's, there's a retreat here, then we wow. are there. Oh, then you, you talk to your other friend and we are there because that time people are receiving the Holy Spirit kind of... But thing. Rev, yes. before you even continue, you see, today, as you said, you had friends, like, you know, those names that you mentioned, yes. you were serving very well in your respective churches. Local church, yes. But you could team up and have revivals and, you know, could say that all Other those... Places, yes. Because the zeal. But today, if that should happen, won't us be termed as somebody trying to break away from the church? I mean, it's like you are breaking off. Don't you think that would have been the team for today compared to your days? It could be. In my days too, it was. That's where I'm coming okay. towards. Okay. You know? And so we'll go and we'll go to Lake Oncardis. We'll go and pray. We'll go to a brewery. And then when you come to church, everything mm. is more soft and you know about something and we are praying in tongues and <laughs> so, so once in a while well i'll pick some of the youth people and then i'll take them to gardens and meet some of my commando friends if you allow me to put it that way that's right so when we come back to our local church mm. it's like you people you want to cause revolution in the church <laughs> wow yes the same one, story. Yes. One day, and we were on fire. Talk mm. about that. Mm. And we thought we could change the church. One day, I got suspended by my pastor. Think about a man. Wow. Think about a man that I highly respect. 
Wow. Wow. And then he stood, he had traveled when he came back. He said, um, some of the young people are not coming to church like they should. Mm. And then he mentioned, if you speak in tongues, it doesn't mean you have reached anywhere. Wow. And he lashed from the pulpit. Mm. And then said, from this day, of being that William, you have been removed from being the youth president. Wow. And, um, you know, now listen to this. I had friends outside, colleagues. Okay. okay. But do you know, I never told anybody I've been suspended in church. I never stopped going to church. Mm. I, was, I was sitting at the back. Mm. It was a shame for me, but I, I took it. Mm. Not knowing my pastor was watching how mm. I was going to respond to that. He knew that he knew I wasn't I wasn't a bad influence. Okay. But, but at times they put you through the test. Reverend, let's look at that part. Let's look at that. I'm interested in what you just said. In the midst of the congregation, mm -hmm. he called you, rebuked mm -hmm. you, yeah, and started to watch you. Mm -hmm. And suspended let's, me. I was suspended. suspended you. Yeah. Now, let's look at the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. Could it have been done in a different way? I mean, because maybe you thought you were on fire. <laughs> yeah. The zone was there. I mean, I mean, you were not forming your church. You were not breaking, you know, I mean, the whole thing. It's like you are doing what God wants you to do, preaching and doing all those things. Why would he stand in the midst of everybody and rebuke you, not calling you, talk to you that, son, the zeal is there, but there's a proper way of doing it, but rather suspend you. Why? Yeah, because now looking back, mm. it was beginning to filter in. Some of the young people were not even beginning to respect the assistant pastor and all that. Like we okay. need to go for evenings, we go for uh, evangelism and all that. When we come back, mm. the young people will not come to church. Okay. Okay. So, even though my motive may be right, mm. the impact wasn't very good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I thank God that He suspended me. Okay. Because mm. it 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 put a Christian character in me. Wow. It put a good Christian character. And even some of my friends in the church, they were shocked. The assistant pastor and everybody was shocked that I could come to church all the months that wow. I was suspended. They didn't know when the pastor was going to lift it. But mm. I was even like a Sunday school teacher. I stopped all those things, but I was going to church. Wow. You know, and that really helped me build a Christian character. So if 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 you are on fire, it doesn't mean that your pastor can't discipline okay. you. Okay. It doesn't mean your pastor can't rebuke you. Okay. Allow for open rebuke. Okay. The Bible allows that. Okay. So it's it's and it's all part of our our upbringing in the Lord. And, and, mm. and I must say, Eric, it has really helped me. That's why I said my upbringing in First Square Gospel Church. Is is I give God thanks for it. Wow! 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 Yeah. I give God thanks for it. Let's look at some comments coming from Facebook. I'm sorry, YouTube. I realize there are a lot of people watching us from YouTube today. Uh, this is Tilly Beidou. Say that rebels for Jesus hearing your heart. Uh, that is Reverend. Please keep sending in your comments. <laughs> you see, Reverend is laughing. Please send in your comments. We are having a good time. <laughs> and it's coming from Martha. Martha says rebels in Christ. And it's coming from Edward. Edward Yao Akumia says that uh, there's a hearing from Ghana. Wow, wow, wow. Please share, share. If you are watching us from Facebook, share. If you are watching us from YouTube, please do us a big favor and share so that many people can also watch this. This is coming from um, Augustine Amankona. It says that Reverend Obindako is a gift to the body of Christ and a great asset to the upcoming pastors. Reverend William, we love you. Wow, this is coming from Yahweh. Yahweh says that God's calling is different. And upon again says that God leads people differently 
one rule doesn't fit all wow keep sending me your comment and share 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 so family what are we learning here now that is teaching us something that is nothing wrong when you get rebuke listen if it was you and i probably at that time would have stopped the church and that's what we see today when we have small anointing when we can preach the gospel when we can prophesy and it comes to pass we think that we have arrived then we begin to go out and set up our own churches listen to be rebuked was even an avenue an avenue for for reverend to leave the church but look at what he said he said he kept attending church going to church everybody was surprised he could have as well gone out to go and set up his church what are we learning here today young ministers this is a father who has seen it all and he's telling us his story what are you learning from this story what are you taking home today thank you now Reverend, let me ask you this question. You kept mentioning about the zeal when you mentioned Reverend Christy Dotete's name, uh, 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 presiding Bishop Takia Boy, uh, that's uh, uh, Apostle Otabel, uh, that's uh, uh, Pastor Otabel, and the rest. Dr. Doctor, Doctor Mensa Otabel. Dr. Mensa Otabel. Mm -hmm. The zeal in your days mm -hmm. and now, what is the difference? The zeal. What do you see today? What is your well, name? I'm glad. I'm glad you could ask that question. Mm. See, um, I will wish. I will wish that uh, since this is an interview and not a teaching section, I'm not able to get into certain things. Real. Please do. This one has no formula. Please do. It's allowed. <laughs> Our platform is allowed. When we get a father's, we don't have formula. It just comes in and out. So whatever God lays on your heart, please teach us. That's why we invited you. We we cannot. Mm. We cannot put God in a box mm. Mm. and make one rule for everybody. Mm. You see, in our era, myself, mm. Dr. Mensa Otabel. Wow. Reverend Eric Kwapon, mm. my close friend and ally, Ni Nabi Ni Takiya Boy, mm. and many others. But these were the closest. Michael Acel. Okay. Dr. Isaac Quay. Mm. You see, we were called to be pioneers. Okay. So the role of pioneers are different from others who come along to come and build on what the pioneers have done. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. That's right. So we cannot... Uh, put everybody in the same thing and say, this is how it is, this is how it ought to be. But mm. it's very, very important for us to know that um, these guys were pioneers. Okay. They didn't have this, but they did this. They mm. didn't do this, but they were able to accomplish this. Okay. Those who come to build upon it must have the humility mm. to be able to see that Maybe I'm not supposed to be doing the same thing Pastor Nina B, Bishop Nina B, Nitaki Aboy did mm. or what Dr. Otabel did. Mm. But God may use me to build upon it. Okay. Now most of the time, we think that we should be able to do the same thing mm. and, and even maybe overtake them and do that. So there is no continuity that's the difference mm. there's no continuity people people are not willing to to wait on their ministry and to wait on the lord until god brings them out mm. also those of us who seem to be allowed by god to be in the pioneering state too 
We don't mm. want to release people. Wow. When it is when it is time for people to be released, we don't want to release them. We want to keep them down. Wow. We want to use them to accomplish our purposes. Mercy. But God, God, God has a purpose for everybody. Okay. So ours is to help people discover God's purpose for their lives. Mm. I mean, mm. look at what you are doing. I mean, it's it's just. Can I say fantabulous? No, Bishop Dakaule to say mercy, Lord, mercy, you know. It. Mercy, mercy, mercy is a word. <laughs> what you are doing is wonderful. Wow! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can you. bet you. I can bet you. Mm. In the next six months, we are going to see a lot of people trying to do what oh, we are doing. In Jesus' name, wow. And it is not because they are called mm. and enabled. First Timothy 1.12. I thank my Lord Jesus Christ Jesus. who has enabled me, mm. putting me into the ministry. Into the ministry. So, so what you are doing, you are enabled. Mm. You you already enabled, you already called by God. Mm. He counted mm. me faithful, putting mm. me into the ministry. Mm. So when we hear somebody is doing something, we want to do the same thing. Okay. Okay. Instead of instead of finding out what our gift is, what our callings is. Mm. So we have we have a problem one. People who are pioneers, some of us, are mm. not willing to release and help people to stand on their feet to become what God wants them to be. Wow. Wow. We, we want them to be under us. So we will use them to accomplish what we want. Reverend, that's a big statement. Oh. This is very, very, very big. The question then would be, why that case? Why? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. So that is one aspect. The other aspect is young people who are coming. They mm. want to be like them. Mm. And so they also push and they are not willing to bid their time because God has a time. So we cannot only take one section and lambast them. Okay. We can't take that, oh, uh, uh, some of the leaders are not willing to release people, but because it's not mm. all, and then okay. there are also that kind. So we have these problems on this, on both sides. Okay. Yeah, on both sides, and that is why it is so. Um, mm. To answer the, your last question, the we have to guard our heart, okay, because. Uh, we can get to a place where ambition and ego takes mm. over our love for Jesus Christ. Mercy. Mercy. You see, the ambition to be, you want to become. Mm. It is not what God wants you to be. Mm. 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 The two mm. are different. Mm. Mm. So today, in, 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 the, in the body of Christ, our, our sector, everybody is pushing to become. Mm. Everybody wants to be at the top. It, it's, it's, it's a very serious issue. Mercy. It's, it's, so, so um, I don't know how to put it, but it's sad. may the Lord have mercy upon us. But Reverend, we yes. can't let you go without, you know, probably talking about the way out. Because personally, you know, you see, I can tell the way you you, 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 are, you are talking about this with that kind of emotions. And, you know, so what is the way out? What do we do? Now, we've, we've looking at two things here. One, the fathers are not eager to release or probably help the younger ones to stand on their feet to probably, I mean, walk in the call that God has called them. Versus the younger ones also don't want to walk through the process. They also probably want to be in the shoes of the fathers just overnight. As a father, you've experienced this all through your ministry. The 70s, the 60s, 
coming through to, to now, 2024, what do you think could be or will be the way out? How are we able to bridge the gap here? I want to, I want to correct a statement you've just made. Sure, I, I didn't say the fathers don't want to release the children. Okay. It's better to say some fathers. Some. Okay, thank you for yeah. that correction. Some because of not, the fathers. Yes, some mm -hmm. fathers, but not everybody. There are wonderful ministers okay. of God who are out there helping young ones, not only mm. emotionally, mm. spiritually, but even financially. Mm. So, mm. so it will not be right it will not be mm. correct for us mm. to make a general statement that the father yes, okay mm -hmm. please please sure and then at the same time we cannot say all young people mm. are rebellious okay there are people who have a heart mm. they want to learn they want to know mm. okay they want to push forward mm. so always let's have that at the back of our mind okay because at times I hear people say, oh, today there are no fathers. There are fathers. Okay. Okay. Who are doing good work. Mm. They don't even want to be called fathers. Mm. They don't want that title. Like myself, I don't want that title. Like, I just want to do what God has called me to do. That's right. You see. So um, I wanted to chip that in because okay. at times people can say things that... Uh, hey, now, Pastor Ben Daku says that now the fathers <laughs> don't want to release people. No, no, I never said that. I never That's said right. that. I mm. said that there are some, mm. you know, and so forth and so on. So if I can take your question now, I will answer that one. That's you right. answer your question? Yes. As to why, was, huh? Yes, exactly. I mean, how do we bridge the gap? Some fathers, mm. some young ministers. Um, It's a very difficult question. Hmm. because we cannot make rules and then make everybody obey those rules. Wow. But what I think is that everybody must have a love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's so, that makes a whole difference. Jesus. You see, you see, you agree with me, mm. uh, God servant Eric, that in our era, there are no legalisms. Mm. The Old Testament was a legal thing. Okay. But, but in the New Testament, we don't have that legal thing. If you don't do this, this is going to happen and that kind of thing. We are led by the Spirit of God. Okay. So we must all love the Lord Jesus Christ and be genuinely sincere that the Spirit mm. of God is, is leading us. Okay. If the Spirit of God is leading us, everything is going to fall in its place. And the uh, ambition, mm. ambition, we mm. should do our best to overcome ambition. When we are ambitious in the church, mm. we don't care who we step on, we don't care who we belittle, we mm. don't care how, how how we are holding on to somebody's ministry. You know, in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, God told the children of Israel that when the year of Jubilee comes, somebody okay. has somebody has served you all these years and uh, you, you, you release them to mm. go. And they say, oh no, you have been a good master to me and I want to stay with you. He said, take him back. But if they say, no, I want to go and take care of my family and my children. You know what God said? God said, let him go. Mm, mm. He said, bless him. He said, look wow. at the blessing with which God has blessed you and bless him. I wish mm. we could teach that. Okay. Unfortunately, when you serve people and then you feel, listen to this, listen mm. to this, my brother Eric, listen to this, and you feel led by the Spirit of God. You feel impressed in your spirit wow. to do this. There are some who will not like that because it doesn't conform with their vision. Mm. You see? So 
we all have visions, but we must also allow because we are crazymatics. Oh, sorry, we are charismatic. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> so, so we know that as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Mm. Oh, Jesus. So do we do we give room for the leading of the Spirit? Mm. Do we? Jesus. It's very difficult. Either you are using the Spirit to lie your way out by saying, oh, the see. Spirit is leading me, or you are speaking the truth of the leading of the Spirit of God. Wow. Which, <laughs> which at times too, some leaders may not be very interested because they don't want mm. to lose you or they don't want you to go. That's right. So okay. we, we, these are issues, but we have to know that this work belongs to God. Mm. He should take the glory. He should take the honor. Amen. And your reward, nobody can take away from you. Amen. No, no, but there's nobody on earth because we are not going to be rewarded that way. God's mm. marking, marking scheme is totally different. Mm. Okay. Because there will be people you thought that they have won the world, but God says you didn't do anything. Yes. And there are, and there are those two who didn't do. In our eyes, they didn't do anything, but God says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Mercy, mercy. So, and we need each other. We need okay. each other. And we need to support each other. So, we must allow. If somebody says they want to go, bless him. Okay. Bless him and let him go. Wow. Don't curse, don't curse him. Okay. There are places where they will even pray against you that you should die. Mercy. Simply because people want to hold on to what they have and what they have achieved. Mercy. This is God's work. Jesus. So, so wow. there are so many things on both sides. I'm not speaking against we who are fathers or maybe fathers. And I'm not speaking against those who are upcoming. All of us have got pitfalls mm. that we've got to look at and overcome Amen. if we are going to last. Wow, wow. On this note, we're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll ask one or two questions and uh, activate the phone lines for some calls. We have a father in the house. Maybe it's been a while since you heard from daddy. Daddy is here to say hi. I mean, you know, we are in the new year and today is the 6th of January 2024. So when we come back, we just ask one or two questions, open the lines, then off we go so that we can allow him to go and rest. So just hold on for a quick baby break. What have you been through? What have you survived? My story, his call with God's servant, Eric Obeng is a program designed to encourage servants of God in the ministry. Guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where God called them into the ministry, the challenges and oppositions they faced. Ministry is not for lazy people. I wanted to be a medical doctor and I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. I but in all of it, we are more than conquerors. I felt, um, I felt this, this if I if I quit, it, I didn't know how I was really going to survive. And how far the Lord, by His grace, has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know, being in that ministry. The mistakes are made, and then how you choose your leadership really, really take your time and pray and be very convinced. Praying for them to be healed and God worked miracles. Mm. The enemy is smart and I always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable. Mm. It takes the power of God. My Story, His Call is broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and the Word and Spirit Network Radio with your host, God's servant, Eric Obey. Follow and subscribe for life-changing encounters. This is time that we want to be encouraged. This is time that we want to have fellowship in the Lord. My story, his call. One call, many great stories. Cyber attacks are on the rise with hackers constantly seeking vulnerabilities to exploit, whether it's personal information, financial data, 
or critical infrastructure, no one is immune to the threats of the digital age. That's where cybersecurity comes in. Great self IT solutions can help you develop a career in cybersecurity and in six figures without necessarily having any technical background. Join us as we journey through this path together on our YouTube channel, Great Self IT Solutions. For more information, contact plus one five seven one three six five one two five one. Well, we are back again. If you just join us, this is my story, his call. And uh, this broadcast is proudly sponsored by Great Self IT Solutions. If you're interested in becoming a compliance analyst, uh, GRC analyst, privacy analyst, RMF specialist, uh, system engineer analyst, kindly contact Great Self IT Solutions on the, uh, that's if you go to uh, YouTube, you can find uh, the YouTube over there. You can get more information about that. If you also want to call personally, you can call 571-365-1251. And also we do this every Saturday where we engage the fathers of the land to talk to us about ministry and to also shepherd us. You can send in your comments and I will read it as well. Now, let's engage Daddy for just a few seconds. And we've also activated the phone line. So maybe you can give us a call. If you want to call us, uh, if you are within the United States of America, you can just call 571-365-1251. You can call direct. We'll pick up the call and uh, Daddy will hear you. If you have any question, maybe you are a minister uh, of the gospel. You have some question. Maybe um, you want to say hi to Daddy. Daddy is also here uh, if you are calling outside US, uh, just call the WhatsApp line, just with the WhatsApp line, audio line only, the same number, 571-365-1251. And Daddy, again, is here to help us. You, you can give us a call, and uh, the lines have been activated now. So if you can call WhatsApp line. If you are in US, just call direct, 571-365-1251. Now, uh, Daddy, let's engage you for just a few minutes and allow you to go and probably get you back again some other time <laughs> i think um, i think so because i don't think we've been able to deal with uh even half exactly. of what yes. i thought we were going to be able to deal with exactly. like what what i do now how i came to do the things that i do mm. and um, how to recognize the call of god upon your life mm. and so many other things and i'll be willing to come back Oh, the sure. Lord allows to to teach on this wow. thing. You know, it's a blessing. We, oh, we have, wow. we have, I'll tell you, Eric, we have a lot to share. Oh, we you. have a lot to share. Thank there are mistakes we have done. Oh, and we can we can we can help others not to repeat those same mistakes. Wow. But in fact, I was about to ask those two questions, then okay. allow you to because now we've covered one hour. We don't want to stretch you too much. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to stretch you too much. <laughs> one hour is enough. Just, we just okay. two hours. Yeah, so it's too much. So I want to ask those two questions, then make I'm so glad, oh my goodness, Reverend, you've made my day, that you are willing to come back. And that's what we want. And thank you and thank you again for that. But I just want to find out, tell us challenges in ministry. And if you were to start ministry all over again, what are the things that you will avoid? Let's put those together and tell us as many as you can. We are ready, please. Um, that's a very difficult question. Mm. You know, as to what will I have avoided? Mm. But I think that uh, some of the things comes with... Um, one's level of growth, naturally speaking. Okay. okay. Remember that um, I got called by God at the age of uh, 13. Mm. Thank you, Pastor Frank. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> I salute you too. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I got called at the age of 13 mm. and uh, being youthful exuberance mm. and um, anything you want it now 
and so forth. Now that I am growing in in the physical, natural age, I think that uh, uh, now you have children. You okay. see that even you you need patience mm-hmm. to to see your children turn around, and That's so right. forth and so on. So some of uh, what I consider as mistakes okay. were not out of an uh, impure heart. Okay. Okay. or hatred i love the body of christ mm. eric my whole my whole life my whole life and i say that with tears my whole life jesus, has jesus. Been the body of christ. my natural family calls me oh the church has taken me because i live for the church you wow. know so there are mistakes that have been made but i think that they are lack of um there is a spiritual growth there but there's a lack of natural growth to okay. see that something you couldn't do today tomorrow you can do and so forth and so on and not mm. be patient with others mm. and so forth so for me now i'm learning to be very patient okay. and uh, i'm also learning to know that if god doesn't do something today tomorrow he could do it wow. and uh, yeah, so so these are some of the things, uh, you know, as young people, we wanted it now. Mm. And we thought that if we didn't do it, mm. um, we, might, we might even lose the ministry. Okay. You okay. know, so, um, and then at times you want to put your personal call ahead of uh, the interest of the body of Christ. Mm. Mm. you know yeah you wouldn't know that if i take this action this is the repercussion That's right. that it can bring into the body of christ so so god these are things that i have learned but uh, uh, the greatest of all is taking your time mm. to grow and to develop and to know that if God has something for you, nobody on earth Jesus. can Jesus. stop it. Nobody, nobody, Jesus. nobody. We we learn those lessons from from those who responded to the call of God. In the beginning, it may look like it, but at the end, it will speak for itself. So, um, I mean, this this for this question, this is what I can say. I can't say this, that, that, but. Yeah. Uh, and also when i was when i was younger mm. you know i could be very critical okay. i could be very i could be very critical of my seniors you know we thought that they didn't have the zeal and the power like we did mm. you know but uh, as you grow you your perspective changes mm. so today i am very very less mm. critical <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, very, very less critical. Wow. And so much so that people even think I've lost my fire. The fire is can be lost, but the attitude has mm-hmm. changed a lot. Man. The wow. Has changed a lot. Yeah, so. Wow. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you again. Now, family, uh, this is uh, an announcement. Next month, 24th of February. Uh, we have what we call Believers Empowerment Summit. It's a conference for pastors, bishops, ministers all over the world. And uh, we are grateful to have Dr. Frank Ofusu appear as our resource person on that day. It's going to be on Zoom. So, uh, uh, Daddy, thank you for, uh, I mean, showing the i mean the i mean always been there to help us uh reverend obeying uh dr frank is one of the uh, uh the fathers that's my goodness anytime you reach out to him the passion and, the desire. and he's a and he's a great pastor and teacher oh my goodness jesus mm-hmm. we love this man so uh pastor frank uh we are looking forward we are looking forward for 24th of uh, February just next month is going to be on Zoom. Uh, we are putting the flyers together. We are putting the video promo together. When everything is set, we are just waiting for the time. 
we are waiting for a confirmation then we'll get everything out so please if you are a pastor if you are a believer not only for pastors but a believer i mean somebody who has the zeal this is going to be the third edition we've had the first one we had the second one and uh dr frank Vosopia is going to be the third one to lead us it is just two hours the one hour is to allow him to speak to us to equip us then the following uh, um, um, uh, hour is for questions 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 about ministry i encourage you to mark this on your calendar again it's going to be on 24th of february just next month and i believe your life will never be uh the same okay there's a response here uh he says dr <laughs> Dr. William is a better teacher. I love him. <laughs> That's debatable, isn't it? That's debatable. <laughs> Maybe you may want to open the, the do a special one and say that's wow. debatable. Yeah. Yeah. What we we'll do is we are looking for a day where we can bring the fathers together. Then we 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 have discussions. Yeah, we are looking for a very nice day where we engage the fathers and they just pour their heart to us. I mean, one or two fathers from time to time. And I uh, will believe that uh, that will be a blessing to us. Uh, Reverend, let me just allow you to, as I said, so that we can come back again. And I'm so glad. You didn't ask your last question, did you? I will ask it. I will ask it. I would definitely ask it. <laughs> My last question is, what would you advise the up and coming ministers? <laughs> Have you finished your question? <laughs> yes. How do you advise us? I mean, I mean, what do you see today? I mean, if there's any full stop that you yeah. need to bring, what would you say to us? Can you ask your question again? I said, yes. if you were to advise the up and coming ministers like us. Yes. What would you say to us so far as the ministry is concerned? Hmm. You like to ask very intricate questions. <laughs> I don't know if there's one thing I could say, but let me just say this. Mm -hmm. The call mm -hmm. is from God. Jesus. The call is from God. He even called us from my mother's womb. <laughs> Glory to God. It's, it's Thank amazing. You. Thank you. And so we got to know, we got to know that nobody on earth, on this earth, can stop it. We didn't call it's God who called us. I said those who call themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter where you are, once you recognize God's call upon yourself, allow him, especially if he put place you under a pastor or under a system, allow me. That system will also develop your character mm -hmm. and develop a certain uh ministry in you mm. pray okay pray if you don't like something talk to god about it okay be less critical of your leaders mm. because whatever you criticize mm. will be waiting ahead of you your meeting so be less critical be very very less if i would say don't be even critical at all mm. you know don't be critical at all and allow your leaders to speak into your life mm. i believe that if we look at those in the bible and we learned there were others we never thought okay that they could fulfill what god has called them to become like Joseph in the pit, okay. like Joseph in the prison. But mm. God will always come through for you. Amen. So so don't be afraid that somebody can sit on your ministry. Because mm. when you have that attitude, you are going to physically fight 
You are going to lie. You are going to try to rebel and up no. Just trust God and keep doing it. I mean, he will open the door for you. And then I will also say that seek to develop the ministry God has called you to. Mm. It's so important. Mm. It's not about position. It's about ministry. It's about service. Wow. And wherever he finds said that, you know, Eric recently, about two years or three years ago, I, I was just praying and I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, I don't even want to be known anymore. I just, mm. I just want to serve you. And wherever Jesus. you put me, if you, if you tell me to go to this village and say, so nobody ever hears about Obindako again, that is fine. The joy is in serving the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, so that is what I want to say. Just a little bit of it. And also to say that promotion comes from God. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Glory to God. Promotion. Mm. Let me tell you, mm. when, when the time comes for God to promote you, he will remove everything that has been an obstacle. Jesus. Don't, don't seek to do it yourself. My he will. Goodness. He will. Wow. And God, God is greater than any system. Mm. And God is greater than any human being. Man can set up a big system. Man can look a, a whole. Can you imagine that a whole nation like Egypt, a superpower at that time, the, the greatest nation? My goodness, they, they couldn't stop Moses and the children of Israel. Wow, you know why? Because wow. God was with them. Thank you. And in the pillar of cloud, he will move Thank back. You. To make sure the people don't penetrate and then in the night he will lead them so there's a supernatural presence Jesus. god is with us Amen. nobody can stop you except Amen. the way you you live and the way you conduct yourself wow so let us let us serve god and let us my final thing let us love god's people mm. there's, there's nothing greater than love Mm. Yes, let us love God. Let us find it easier to forgive okay. easily and move okay. on and to say, I am sorry and move on. So the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified all the time. Wow. Wow. Reverend Obin, thank you so, 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 so much. In fact, we can't thank you enough. You are such a blessing to the body of Christ. We've learned a lot. There are so many pastors, so many bishops, so many apostles, so many believers watching us today. And uh, we have learned a lot. And you see, uh, what I'm so much happy about is the fact that you said you are willing to come back again. Of course. And that is what this platform stands for. This platform is a platform where we welcome ministers of the gospel to come and speak to us. Some of us, I mean, there's that edge in us. That, that, there's that zeal in us. We want to serve the Lord. We want to do the ministry and do it the proper way. If you go out, you see what is out there. If you go there, it's, I mean, and I love what you said. There are some fathers. There are some young ministers like us who are willing to sit under the feet of fathers like you and tap into the grace and anointing that is upon your life and on that we want to say thank you and thank you again we couldn't cover i mean we just did one third of what we are supposed to cover exactly so i believe exactly. <laughs> so i believe we can have series of this so we're going to have part two part three part four and it goes beyond and i love what you said you are even willing to engage other ministers to have a discussion that even touched my heart so we'll try and put that together and have other ministers have a nice topic and learn from the fathers some of us again we are willing to learn what is can i say, say can you. i say one thing can i say one thing before yes please yes please, please. 
And that is, um, I want to encourage you. Sure. You have no, you have no, you have no knowledge mm. as to where what you are doing, God mm. will take it. Before I came, before I came here, I prayed. Jesus. And I said, Lord, I know there are people who have been hurt and there are people who have hurt so many things. And uh, some even don't know whether I exist again or not. Mm -hmm. And then I said, Lord, use this opening to heal. Use this opening to bless. Use this opening to open hearts that have been closed. And um, I just want you to know that uh, you don't even, you may not even know the length and the breadth. So please follow God's leading. Don't come under any compulsion to do it any other way. Thank you. <laughs> but the way the Lord leads you, Thank the you. way the Lord leads you. Thank you. Thank you very much and be blessed. Amen. 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 <laughs> Family, this is how Father Lord will brought, I'm sorry, will bring us or had brought us so far as this broadcast is concerned. And I want to thank everybody. I mean, who took time out of your busy schedule to be with us. I see uh, Pastor uh, uh, Donko is watching with us. I mean, a whole lot. I can't even mention their names. And most of these pastors have been on this platform before. Eric Donko has been here. Dr. Franco Fusuapi has been here on so many occasions. He's coming again on the 24th of February. And that will be a Zoom. He's coming again. I mean, just name them. Um, I presided Bishop Takia Boy, Bishop Elijah Saforo. I can't even call their names. We've been doing this for four, getting to four good years now. Every Saturday, there is a broadcast like this. How can you help us grow? Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and help us grow. And also share. I believe strongly in my spirit that somebody has been revived. I believe it's so strong. Ministry has been revived. I mean, your, your, your relationship with God had been strengthened by what we have heard from the fathers. The book of John said that there are those who have already labored. They've done it. They've done it. So what can we do as young ministers? Let's come sit under the feet of these fathers and learn from them it makes our life so easy in the ministry you don't struggle that much i know say ministry is struggle free it is they are there you know but then they are there to guide us and lead us and that is why we have this channel and we are on facebook if you go to facebook go and look for word and spirit with god's servant eric Obin. Uh, if you go to youtube go and look for my story his call or just God's servant Eric Cobain, or just type Eric Cobain, it's going to come up. You just subscribe, you follow us on Facebook, and uh, on the radio, uh, the radio, our uh, personal radio is Word and Spirit. It is a radio, it's, a, it's an online radio. We are live 24-7. We broadcast the, uh, the interviews. We have preaching messages all over the place. And again, this broadcast was proudly sponsored by great self it solutions if you want to become a cyber security analyst compliance analyst privacy analyst rmf analyst system um system engineer analyst please give great self it solutions a call the number to call is 571-365-1251 the number is the one that you see scrolling over there 571-365-1251 and uh they will be of great help to you Daddy, finally, would you please pray for us, all of us, before we let you go? Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to bless you that it pleased you. Mm -hmm. And it is part of your plan that we should come into the world in a time that we have come. We know that nothing is by accident. For known unto you are all your works from the beginning. And so I want to thank you what you are doing by your spirit. And thank you for all my colleagues and friends and my seniors. And uh, even those who are coming after us. 
we ask that you continue to strengthen us especially the year 2024, that we might do more than we've ever done for your glory. May we seek nothing by your glory. May your glory, O oh Lord, be established. And I thank you for God's servant, Eric. Bless his work. Strengthen his hands. Granting men and women that will stand with him. And for all of us, bless the work of our hands and what we do. May we all live together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And may this generation be a generation that others will call us blessed for allowing the Lord to use us. I pray for other pastors and ministers that will come on this program. Their, their testimony and what they share will be a blessing to all of us. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Heal us and we will be healed. Jesus. Strengthen us and we will be strengthened. Lead us, Lord, and we will follow your leading. We thank you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. And I want to take this opportunity and say a big thanks to my co-producer, Miss Sandra. Miss Sandra I mean, was behind the scenes, putting things together, coordinating, <laughs> saying to it that <laughs> we're able to get a reference of being on board to have this discussion. So my co-producer, uh, Miss Sandra, thank you and thank you and God bless you so, 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 so much. I will call you after this. They will make arrangement for the part two very soon, very, very soon. We will not waste time on this. We need daddy very, very soon. Again, thank you and thank you and thank you for watching. So next week we have another broadcast and uh, the broadcast is going to be uh, with Prophet Moses Austin all the way in UK. It is another time mm -hmm. and I uh, believe that your life will never be the same. Just mark it on the calendar and join us when we go live. That's why you need to subscribe. Until we meet again, what time is it? It is my story, his call time. What have you been through? What have you survived? Bye-bye, bye-bye and bye for now. What have you been through? What have you survived? My story, his call with God's servant, Eric Obeng is a program designed to encourage servants of God in the ministry. Guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where God called them into the ministry, the challenges and oppositions they face. Ministry is not for lazy people. I wanted to be a medical doctor. And I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. Huh? But in all of it, we're more than conquerors. <laughs> I felt, um, I felt this, this if, I, if I quit it, I didn't know how I was really gonna survive and how far the Lord by His grace has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know, being in that ministry. Mistakes are made, and then how you choose your leadership. You really, really take your time and pray and be very convinced praying for them to be healed and God worked miracles. Mm. The enemy is smart and I always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable. Mm. It takes the power of God. My Story, His Call is broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and the Word and Spirit Network Radio with your host, God's servant, Eric Obeng. Follow and subscribe for life changing